your, I mean, your book, uh, which is actually what we are here to talk about, <laughs> uh, Hindu love stories, right? Um, and when, it, when is it? Is it uh, when it? When is it slated to be released? Is it? Um, it's it's been released um, okay. as an ebook on Kindle. Ebook. Okay. So mm -hmm. in Amazon Worldwide, it's available um, as an ebook, and then the paperback version will be. It's been released in the U.S., but it'll okay. be out in the India very shortly. Very shortly. Okay, so we can get it on Kindle um, and yes, on it's, it's on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, and I'm very happy that we're talking about this on this occasion of Valentine's Day. Um, I, I didn't want to get into the history of this uh, this particular day. I mean, it's uh, we all know that it's it's an appropriated uh, festival. Um, yes. So, uh, in any anyhow, I mean, since it is the day of love and all that, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about your book today. Um, so, your book, you say, dharmically ever after. The word dharmic is very very important. Uh, when you talk about Hindu love stories, because the idea of dharma, like you just pointed out, is very, very important, even in the pursuit of love. Uh, so uh, keeping that in mind, uh, what were your learnings as you embarked on this journey, as you were writing this book? Um, so, I mean, as a woman, as a woman who's just gotten married, uh, as a woman in love, did it, did, it, did it reinforce some of the things that you already knew, or did you learn something new while you were writing it or when you were researching? Uh, how did it change you? It's, yeah, it, it did change me. And what was interesting is, so uh, what the book is, it's a collection of over 25 stories from the Itihasas, our Puranas, um, Hindu history, um, about different um, inspirational, um, you know, couples. And, um, when I wrote the book, I was familiar with, with many of these stories. Um, but some of the things that, that were eye-opening for me, um, one is some of these stories appear, let's say in, in the Rig Veda or, or somewhere in the Vedas, and then they reappear in the Mahabharata or in, in the Puranas. And it was, it was really interesting to see um, how the stories evolved or, or, or changed or how they were the same, but, but the themes were, were the same. Um, and then the other thing that I did is I grouped them into different themes. So one is, you know, the beginning of love. So one is sometimes love is fleeting. One is on separation. Um, one yes. is on, you know, rising through love rather than just falling in love. Um, and, and what I really found is there is just a very, you know, they come from very um, diverse sets of, of texts or traditions. Some come from like, you know, folklore, some come from like history. So I talk about uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his second wife, Vishnu Priya Devi. But there's just a very consistent um, ethos, worldview, framework of values and, and principles that, that come from this. And it's, it's not judgmental, it's not moralistic, but it's based on a very nuanced, rich understanding of, of human psychology and accepting human psychology and our, our needs and desires, but then, you know, spiritualizing it and, and making it something elevating and, uh, sub, you know, sublime um, and very inspirational. So, um, you know, reading about uh, Satya Pama and, and Krishna and, and when she helps him uh, destroy Narakasura and, and things like that, like the story is actually like, you know, writing about them, even though I knew them, it just made me uh, almost meditate upon them. And now they, they, they're, they're kind of with me and they, you know, they, they, they inspire me. Um, and so appreciating that um, there's so much relevance to us. So, um, you know, for, for me, I, I learned, like I said, much more of the nuance of, of the karmic vision and understanding of, of, of love and the associated emotions. I found the inspiration from it. And then, um, and that's why I think it's, it's really, these stories are so relevant for, for us and still have that application for us. And I also felt kind of this, um, this regret almost. It's like growing up, um, you know, the way I thought, thought of love stories, and I've always been like a romantic at heart. It was always this very, you know, like popular culture 
you know, like fairy tales and, oh, you're going to find someone and like this prince is going to come and, and rescue you and like you're going to find happiness and all of these are very like nonsensical notions. And we think we outgrow them, but we don't outgrow them because our popular culture is just full of them. Mm. And it's a very kind of narcissistic view where we use love as validation for self-esteem or because we don't know how to make ourselves, I don't, I don't want to use the word happy, but make ourselves contented and fulfilled. Um, we always looking outside. So that's why I think during the pandemic, you see a lot of people just unable to cope with being at home because they can't be self-sufficient. And, uh, and so the importance of having these stories, which in the past, we just got through osmosis, like our grandparents told us, or we saw it in popular depictions, and we just understood that. And now we don't have that. And without that, Mm -hmm. um, we're actually we're actually losing a lot, mm -hmm. and um, we don't have that uh, you know that orientation and, and that framework that actually helps us live much healthier healthier lives. Mm -hmm. So I think for me it was having a much deeper appreciation of the importance of these stories and the need to preserve and and, and share these stories. Mm -hmm. And also I, I just think um, you know there's always this sense that oh, like Hindu women are so meek and all these stories are about very passive women. And then you read it and it's just, it's just not true. Like, you know, like, like, like Savitri, she's so, she has so much wit and intelligence. And when she's, you know, she's having this discussion with the Yamadeva about, you know, bringing her husband back to life. Sometimes it gets depicted as, oh, she was like, bartering with him or she like she tricked him or something like that but it's not that case I mean she's just talking she's just lost her husband whom she loves very much but she still has a presence of mind to have this very intelligent discourse she's not complaining she actually never asks for her husband's life until the very end when you know Yamadeva kind of offers it to her but she's just discoursing on, on parma and the importance of satsanga and her, her language and her expression are so beautiful that Yamadeva is just like charmed mm -hmm. and he wants to keep giving her these boons. And yeah. that's such a wonderful depiction. And I don't know why we can't even appreciate, uh, appreciate that. So every single woman in, in the stories has her own personality, is, is different, but it's very just strong in, in, in their own ways. Um, so that was a, a, another thing. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.